appreciate you being here. Looking forward to what the Lord's going to do tonight. Yeah. So you pray for the Johnsons. They're going to go sing for us tonight. Then we'll try to bring to you the message tonight from the Lord of God. Yeah.
his house tonight. Appreciate the wonderful singing. And, uh, thank God for his goodness. And uh, I appreciate Miss Ruby helping uh, Rachel sing tonight. Uh, you pray for Rebecca. She's a little fouled up there. I don't know if she's uh, uh, broke her ankle or sprained it real bad, but you pray for her. I hope she gets her feeling better. And uh, so, uh, uh, Ruby, Ruby stepped in tonight. Had a microphone of her own. on the day. <laughs> Appreciate that. Even Kathy Bibles, Acts chapter number 13. Acts chapter number 13 tonight. And uh, I'm not sure, I, I, forgive me, I'm not sure what lesson uh, we're on tonight or if we're even on a lesson. I'm going to be on the truth that every Christian needs to know. And uh, I have no idea what number we're on tonight. I know I'm in about chapter 11 from what I've been uh, trying to study, but uh, I don't know what lesson we're on tonight. All I know is the title of it and uh, what chapter in the Bible we're in. We're in Acts chapter 13 tonight. And uh, the work of the Lord uh, is our mission. The work of the Lord is our mission. And uh, we've uh, had some good studies uh, already uh, through uh, this study on the truths that every Christian needs to know. And uh, I sure pray that tonight will be a blessing and an encouragement and a challenge to our heart and our soul as well. And uh, don't pray for me. The Lord don't change things. Sunday morning, I'm going to try to preach that message April gave it. All right? I've been working on it now for three weeks. I ain't got to preach it yet. And uh, I know that the Lord wants me to preach her message. Amen? And uh, so y'all pray for us. Amen? I appreciate the Lord. Boy, it got good. Amen. I sure appreciate Sunday morning. I'll be honest with you. I don't know about you. I need it Sunday morning. Amen? And, uh, 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 maybe, maybe. And I know I am. I'm guilty. I'm, I'm wrong. I'm wrong. Uh, but boy, I'm telling you, Monday morning, I couldn't wait to see somebody that I knew that didn't go here and may not go somewhere like that to tell them about it. And you know what? Uh, if it's drier than cracker crumbs in here, I still want to tell somebody Amen. about the goodness of the Lord. I ask you to forgive me. Amen. We ought to be, and uh, studying this this week is helping. We ought to be excited about telling people uh, what the Lord is and who He is and what He's done, where He's brought us from. And uh, if they don't have a home church at all, where they can get in. Amen. I we ought to be telling it. And uh, sharing. y'all know how we are. I mean, you know, we, uh, about the only time we say bless the Lord or help the Lord is uh, when it's about to run off in a ditch somewhere. Yeah. Amen. You know, I mean, if I'm running well and you're shouting, you're going to say, bless the Lord. Get on and help the Lord. But if I get the stuff, bless the Lord, help him. <laughs> well, we ought to be excited about it. Amen. Amen. Uh, just encouraged to be able to come to the house of the Lord tonight. I know we got burdens and needs and prayer requests and special things we need to be praying about. Uh, but more than that, tonight we need to be sharing the good news of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. I'm sure we'll let him sit down along this Sunday morning. Amen. Let us know he's still on the throne. He's still alive. He's still here to answer our prayers. That then takes time to look on somebody like us. Amen. Amen. What a blessing. I appreciate it tonight. If you found your place, Acts chapter 13, stand with the reverence for the reading of the Word of God tonight. Acts 13, we will read the first four verses tonight, and I'm trying to get to you uh, what we have for tonight. I was said in verse 1, Now there were in the church that was at Antioch certain prophets and teachers, as Barnabas and Simeon, that was called Niger, and Lucius of Cyrene, and Manaeum, uh, which had been brought up with Herod, the patriarch, and Saul. As they, uh, as they ministered to the Lord and fasted, the Holy Ghost said, Separate me, Barnabas and Saul, for the work we're into I have called them. When they had fasted and prayed and laid their hands on them, they sent them away. So they, being sent forth by the Holy Ghost, departed unto Seleucia, and from thence they sailed to Cyprus. Father, we sure love you tonight. Father, we thank you for the word of God. I pray, God, just for a little while tonight, Lord, that you'd give us understanding of your word. I pray that you'd challenge us. God, I pray, Father, you'd convict our hearts tonight, encourage us through the word of God. Lord, I pray, God, that we would just see, Lord, uh, where we failed and where we come short. But, Lord, we'd see the word of God, Lord, where we can improve and increase tonight. Grow closer to you and grow closer to you. I pray that you get glory to yourself. We sure love you and thank you for that. You do in Jesus' name. Amen. Be seated. And may the Lord have a blessing uh, to the reading of the Word of God tonight. Okay, so let's look at uh, where we're at tonight. Kind of lay a foundation of what's going on here 
And uh, then we'll try to get right into the message tonight. I want you to understand if I could uh, title this uh, lesson tonight that we're studying uh, would simply be the work of the Lord is our mission. And whatever uh, whatever that is and wherever it is, it ought to be uh, our greatest desire tonight. Can I say this? If the Lord has appointed you to do something or the Lord has give you a burden to do something, or as a pastor, or a preacher, or a missionary, if the Lord has called you to do something, I want you to understand this tonight, uh, that there be no greater placement on your life uh, from uh, up to this present day than that that the Lord has instructed you and it, uh, enabled you to be able to do. Uh, tonight, that ought to be the greatest uh, privilege. It ought to be the, it will be the greatest opportunity. But to us, it will be the greatest privilege and the greatest desire to do whatever it is that the Lord uh, has enabled us to do tonight. Uh, notice what your Bible says. The Bible says here in verse 1, <laughs> excuse me, now there was in, in the church that was at Antioch, uh, certain prophets and teachers. Now, uh, up until from Acts chapter number 1, and uh, you know how that we uh, have preached and we studied and we read about uh, how that in the place that they were at, they begin to pray, and excuse me, when they were in one mind and one, one accord, and the Holy Ghost came upon them, we know that they uh, spoke with cloven tongues of fire, we know that all around them begin to hear in their own language, even though that uh, they were all Galileans, I mean, they, they were being able to uh, speak and everybody was able to understand and there was no confusion there but it was after that they come together one line and one accord and after that they prayed uh, that the Holy Ghost came upon we understand that uh, the church that you read about the first church that established there uh, whenever you read about that uh, that's a church you want to be a part of I mean there's souls being saved that uh, daily they're leading into the temple of worship and uh, the Lord was added unto the church daily such as you would be saved. And uh, boy, would be God that that be the same way uh, that we desire to add to our churches today. And man, it wouldn't be because uh, they had the talent to play in a band. It would be the, because they had a talent to teach or even to sing tonight. I mean, I'm just being honest with you. Uh, we didn't try to get them in with a hamburger and draw them away with a hot dog, but it was simply because they were those who would add to the church daily. Such as, like I said, such as should be saved. Uh, you know why the church, to be honest with you tonight, you know why it inflates and deflates and it inflates and it deflates? It's because people's really never been born again. Yeah. When people get born again saved by the grace of God, they're going to understand one thing tonight. It ain't always going to happen like I wanted to happen. Yeah. There's going to be storms in this life. Amen. I, I mean, I, I would be lying to you if I told you that in the last 20 years, there's never been a reason back that I didn't want to stay at home. I'd be terrified. <laughs> Amen. If I told you that every Sunday morning I got up uh, with the dicks and said, boy, I can't wait to preach this, I'd be telling a lie this morning. Amen. But we do what we do because of who he is tonight. Amen. And, and I said a long time ago, I hope my ministry always uh, carries this behind my name. If you're doing it for me or somebody in this church, you're doing it for the wrong reasons. Yeah. Now, we've raised our girls that way. My wife knows that. I know that tonight. I can't do this for this sake. Yes, I'm going to do it that my children will see and your children will see. I'll be honest with you. I'm going to do it for you. Uh, you've heard me say the dangers in coming off the wall. I'm going to do it because of those who went before us. Thank God now I'm back in my man of God. I'm glad he did not come off the wall. I'm going to do it for me and my dad who went before me. And those deacons that uh, signed that ordination certificate back there, some of them in the presence of the Lord tonight. I'm going to do it for those who went before me. I'll be honest with you. I'm going to do it for those that are serving beside me. Not just the deacon board that's gone on before me. I'm going to do it for this deacon board that's serving with me tonight. And uh, men and women that are serving the Lord with me. I'll be honest with you. I'm going to do it for those that are coming up behind us tonight. Our children, not just five, but yours tonight. Amen. 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 We must realize that we do what we do for the Lord. And so up to this point, chapter number 13, Here's what's taking place. The church that's been established in the book of Acts is a Jewish church. But when you get to Antioch, Antioch is a Gentile city. So here's what the Lord has done. And, 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 and the fulfillment of the Lord that, uh, is taking place. 
place here. Let me read a verse to you tonight in Acts chapter number 1. And in verse number 8, the Bible says this, But you shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you. And you shall witness unto me both in Jerusalem and, and, in, and in all Judea and in Samaria and into the uttermost part of the earth. And hey, watch this tonight. I don't care how many people fall out with you over this. Mission started at home. I say amen. I say amen. amen. If I'm not the man of God I need to be in my house, I ain't got no business trying to be the man of God at this house. Amen. Missions does start at home, but aren't you glad it don't stay at home? Amen. Hallelujah. Somebody ought to get a hold of it. What I mean by that, you might have good fellowship, but how many of you try what I challenge you with today? Or money. How many of you got in the car and whatever your travel time was to the work, workplace? You just started thanking God. You didn't ask Him for nothing. Anybody try that challenge? I appreciate you not lying, amen. <laughs> you don't know why we have practice room services? Because you don't miss it. Good night to God bless you. Why do we do? Why, why do we do what we do? Why would you want man of God to come in here and give you something fresh and challenge those up if we ain't going to miss? Here's what the Lord said. He said, I don't expect this just to happen in Jerusalem. But he said in all Judea and in Samaria and in the other most parts there, I believe if I stand up and agree with the missions, does stay at home. But thank God it don't stay at home. Amen. Thank God it don't stay at home. Amen. If we read our Bible directly tonight, it goes across the street, it goes across the state, and it goes across the sea tonight. Amen. No says Antioch was a Gentile city. Now, what's this? Uh, Peter has been the main character. I mean, he's one of three Pentecost, three thousand souls. Yeah. Peter's been the main character, but now guess who's becoming the main character? Yeah. Paul yeah. is about to become yeah. the main character tonight. Notice what your Bible says here. Uh, 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 up until this point, we see Peter. Peter preached Pentecost, 3,000 souls got saved. You've got to understand that Peter is kind of like a bad. He probably wouldn't have rode up the road thanking God on Monday morning. Amen. <laughs> He'd have been boosted and pounded because he didn't catch a thousand fish at Sunday evening after church. Amen. That's Peter. I mean his disciple. I mean, he needed a whole lot of attention. Amen. We ain't calling any names tonight other than Peter's. Amen. And we'll just leave it at that. But up until this point, that's been the main character of that. It's been Peter. But now we're seeing this man by the name of Paul who's been converted, and, and, uh, or, or by the name of Saul, who's been converted and, and has become Paul. Watch what your Bible says this morning, tonight. Number one, I want you to notice this. If I could preach on this all tonight, the work of the Lord is our mission. Number one tonight, I want you to see the men in the church. Look at the men in the church. Now tonight, and, and please, I hope this sounds right when I say it. I don't believe the church would function well today without the women of the church. We ought to thank God for the women of the church. We ought to love the women of the church. And the sad thing is, I, there is some positions tonight, according to our Bible and according to the Lord tonight, that are not positions for a woman tonight. Amen. But I thank God for the women of the church. And when I say that, I'm so thankful that they're praying. I'm thankful that the elder women are teaching the young women tonight. And our Sunday school teachers and those voices in the choir. And there's prayer warriors tonight. We ought to thank God for that tonight. And I want you to notice something. It started with me. And if our homes ever going to be what God had it, then so it to start with me. I believe this tonight. I may have the whole world all out of history on this. But our churches are never going to be what they need to be for God until we get some men that fall in love with Amen. 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 I'm just telling you tonight, they're, they're, they're to raise families, lead homes in the direction of the Lord tonight. We need godly men. In our churches tonight, notice this, the men in the church, you'll find that in Acts chapter number 13. Uh, verse number one, notice what the Bible says. And uh, now there were, 
that were in the church that was at Antioch, certain prophets and teachers, as Barnabas and Simeon, that is called Niagara, and Lucius and Cyrene, and Manna, uh, 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 yeah, Manna, which had been brought up with Herod, the Tetrarch, and Saul. Now, I cannot remember to save my life who, who taught this or who said this or who preached this, but it happened sometime last week. I just can't remember if it was a testimony or when both said was preaching, but uh, if you'll notice that man in there was brought up with Herod the Tetrarch, but notice it, he decided to go a different route tonight. You said, preacher, I didn't have the background uh, where my daddy was a preacher and my grandpa was a preacher. I didn't either tonight. But you've got to start where it is that God had called you or placed you into the ministry. Well, preacher, I've never had a mama that loved to pray and uh, brought us up in the nursery and had an school. Then you be the mother that prays and brings your children up in the nursery and had an school. I have a father that prayed and led us to the family altar. Then you be the daddy that leads your children in the right way for hold the direction towards the family altar tonight. So let's notice it. Who are these men? Well, what does, what does it mean that, that you've got to understand these, these three Fours, F O R E. There's three fours in this. We have a foretelling, we have a foretold, and then we have a, a fourth telling tonight. Notice this the foretelling uh, 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 are things to come, and uh, it's from the first century to the present. So that was the foretelling tonight. That's what these apostles have done, and, and now this ministry is going out further than just Jerusalem. It's a matter of fact, it's come over there into the dead dogs. Somebody ought to thank God that it came to the old dead dogs. Amen. <laughs> that was the foretelling. Then we have the foretold. That is which, it, which is yet to take place. You realize tonight there's some things that's been preached that have not yet happened. You know what that is? That's the foretold. The things that have happened up this present time, uh, that uh, was the foretelling. Uh, we read it in our Bible. And, and watch this. There's some things that's foretold that if we live long enough will be part of the foretelling. Amen. 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 They'll come to pass also. But notice this. That foretelling, foretelling, F-O-R-T-H, telling, that's the things of God in holy boldness. As we preach God's Word, Amen. we're preparing, and God's Word is preparing our hearts for what is still yet to come. Mm -hmm. You realize that even though we read our Bible tonight and we talk about perilous times, we say we're living in perilous times, but we ain't seen them yet. Amen. Everybody okay? Yeah. You're so preaching, it can't be much worse. Oh, it's going to get worse. Oh, yeah. Thank God for the time of God. It's going to get much, much better. Amen. 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 Preacher, but what are you telling me about? I'm foretelling. That's the preaching of the Word of God. Hey, listen, if there wasn't anything out there ahead of us to look forward to right, or to overcome, we wouldn't need this tonight. Amen. 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 If you're going to face things tomorrow, you might not have been planning on You might not even be prepared for it. Amen. Amen. But I'm glad you're the Lord. With this Word, you can overcome it tonight. Amen. All right, I got hurt. I got hurt. I, I gave you point number one that he preached again. Me in the church. Barnabas. Now, I had to write real small and large my Bible, and uh, I don't have them uh, magnifying glasses with me tonight, so I may have to make it up, all right? <laughs> Barnabas. Greatly urged of God. And notice this. Not only was he greatly urged of God, but he owned land. In Cyprus, which is where they're headed, that Gentile land. He owned land that Barnabas did. And he was of the tribe of Levi. But watch this. He is whose sole possession to take one, uh, 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 to take on the needs of the church. Uh, and notice this. It was Barnabas who welcomed Paul unto the disciples. Barnabas is the one that went out there whenever. Paul came in, you know, Paul was the one that persecuted the church and uh, was Saul, and then he, he was converted. And, I mean, you know, they're hearing all this big stuff and all this talk about uh, uh, Saul being changed and Paul converted on converted on Damascus Road. But they also know in the back of their mind, hey, that girl been trying to kill us and, and shut down the churches. Now he says he's for us. Y'all don't look at me like that. It'd be just like this. It'd be just like the old drunk you know all your life come in and get born again saved by the grace of God and say he's drinking from a different fountain. Yeah. And you sit back and say, well, let's give it six months and then we'll reevaluate. Yeah. All right? That's what these fellows were doing with Saul. 
Yeah. Barnabas said, wait a minute. Wait a minute. I've looked at his example. I've, I've noticed the change. Hey, boys, let's, let's take him in under our wing. I believe he'd be one of us. That was Barnabas. That's, that's that person. Barnabas, look, you got to understand, sir. He sold man and brought it, brought the money and said, hey, let, let's not just take care of the needs of the church. I mean, Barnabas was the kind of fella you want me on the north side. Amen? And he's the kind of fella you want to be in the church. He's probably a good man, a good businessman. But watch it. He loved the Lord and he loved to see God do work. You know what a lot of our problem is? We say we love the Lord, but we have a hard time wanting to see Him really work. Come on, brother. When I say that, it may make you get out of your comfort zone. Yeah. Yeah. You may have to tell somebody on the job about it. You may have to, you may get under conviction, have to go home and call a family member you ain't talked to in five or six years and tell them about the goodness of God or get right with God, and get right with Him. Yeah. I'm talking about true revival. I'm talking about a true growing of the church. Notice this. He welcomed them. Well, you know what sinners need? <clears throat> they don't need to know somebody to remind them of all the artwork they got all over them. Remind them of their green hair and how ugly all the piercings are in their face. I mean, believe it or not, no matter how righteous we are or how clean we think of, they can read our expression. Yeah, they, they don't need nobody else to dodge them. Like, well, preacher, how do you? How do you witness to people like that? We, we've come to find out this. I hope this will help you tonight. If, if, if God wants to say something, I believe with all my heart, God will open that door. Then be done the right way. And I say to those people, you know what they need more than anything else? They need to be able to look and see that there is a difference. They don't need somebody to preach Jesus down their throat. They need somebody to show them the love of the Lord Jesus Christ. Man, I'm not saying that. I sit down and greet with them or sit down and part with them or go with them. That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying, but be a friend to them. Show them who he is. Love on them. Pray for them. Yes. They'll know who the Lord really is. Yes. Amen. Notice this. Simeon. Simeon, also known as uh, Niger. That's the, uh, Mark is actually the one that gave him that nickname. Now, notice this. It indicates that uh, that this is the same man who carried the cross of the Lord Jesus in Mark chapter 15, verse 21. This man by the name of Simeon. Now, if you'll notice this tonight, uh, also if you'll go back and study it, and uh, uh, this is how perverted our world has become tonight. There's many words in your Bible tonight that the world has twisted and perverted tonight. And uh, you, you, just for example, uh, uh, if I could say it this way tonight just to help you, the word bastard simply means that they are unbelonging tonight. It's yeah. not a curse word that the world has used tonight. Uh, an ass was a donkey. That was a type of animal that was used to work or to plow. My friend and I used to some shouting ground. Our Lord entered into Jerusalem uh, on the back of one of those animals tonight yeah. to show just how humble he was. As they laid palm leaves in front of me, cried out, Hold down. I'm telling you, I notice it. That word uh, Niger tonight is also where we get our word tonight uh, for, for colored people. You know why? You know why Mark gave him that nickname? Because of the tint and the color of his skin. Now, the world tonight has perverted that and made something bigger than what it was intended to be. I'm going to say something tonight. It's in our Bible. Thank God in the Word of God. It is not perverted. It's not misplaced tonight. Uh, is. He's the same. Matter of fact, I'll tell you how crazy the world is. Now. That man that had the nickname Mark gave is the one that was instructed to carry the cross of Christ. Let me ask you, do you know what our job is as a child of God? Jesus said that he that loveth me shall deny himself and take up his cross and follow me tonight. Sounds to me like Simeon would be a good name to be called tonight. Amen. Amen. Somebody that was willing to bear the cross of Christ. These are the men. Now, in this church, the Lord said, let's pray. We've got a man that's willing to sell possession and provide for the church. He's willing to take in them newcomers that look like outcasts other people. we got one that's got a nickname because of the color of his skin. But he was willing to carry the cross of the 
Lord Jesus Christ. Then the Bible gives us Lucas. He, uh, we know uh, a little about him. I just wonder tonight, we go home and study all this out. I just wonder tonight, maybe if Lucas, Lucas, the reason we don't know a whole lot about it, he's still a new convert. He's one of them that, uh, that Barnabas wanted to the Lord. And he welcomed him in. And we don't have a whole lot of background on him because he ain't been around long. But he's in. Well, that ought to give you some sound around tonight. You know what made me really excited about Sunday morning? First of all, it's because it wasn't drying traffic to him. Yeah. That's the first one. <laughs> yeah, man. And this, that visitors felt like they could come to the altar yeah. Sunday morning. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah.
Uh, if we could just get them all over at one time and come through that and go home, boy, wouldn't that be good tonight? Amen. But it keeps us humble. Somebody say amen right there. And uh, I, I, can, I remember this happening. Women come to church and praying that God would get a hold of their husband. We'd see God get a hold of those husbands. And they come get saved. Get, I mean, you in church, I'm talking about clockwork, but they was there in six months, she'd be gone. Yeah. Left. Left her. Yeah. Right. My sister sitting right there tonight, she could attest, I'm telling you, we saw it happen over and over again. Hey, boy, I ain't going to believe this. Every time a big wrecking ball hit our church, you know where it came from? It came from people that had something to do with the youth. Ring any bells to you tonight? We see it happen over and over and over again. You know what the you know what Satan's trying to do? He's trying to stop the spread of the church. Amen. You see, if our young people get saved, guess what happens when you and I die? Yeah. It's over. Amen. He stopped the church. He, he'll stop it in fear. He'll stop it in lack of faith. Or he'll stop it in the family. Amen. That's, that's the way it works. But notice this, notice it. The ministry of the church is simply this. The Bible said, as they minister to the Lord. How is that? How do we minister to the Lord? Now, you realize that when we come in and we worship Him, you realize that is a sweet savor yeah. in the nostrils of God tonight when we honor His Son. When we begin to lift up songs and the praise and the preacher begins to thunder from the pulpit, the word of God and what the said word of God. Do you realize that's pleasing to the Lord tonight? Hey, listen, he's not, he's not excited if you've been to Sunday school uh, ten weeks in a row. What he's excited about is if you showed up for Sunday school, you was ready for the word of God. Your heart was prepared for it. Your life was clean. And what you sang, you sang the truth. Amen. And the preaching but the key let us know Sunday morning. Uh, one night last week, I don't remember. He preached eight messages since last time I got to preach. <laughs> you let us realize the other night, whenever he mentioned this, that if you don't think you're agreeing with him, you better look up what the word amen means. Amen. When we amen, we're saying, I agree. That's it. Preach on. Yeah. Keep on. I'm in agreement to what it's saying. We better be careful tonight. If we believe our King James Bible, I heard the girls sing that old King James Bible the other night. That old book, wait, the people shout and people say amen. You know what you're saying tonight? From front to back, whatever it says, I'm in agreement with it. Amen. We better make sure our life is lined up with our mouth tonight. Amen. Make sure our feet's on the same path our mouth is talking about. The ministry of the church. You realize that we're ministering to the Lord. We're honoring Him. Have you ever thought about this? How is it that Elijah ministered to Elijah? Elijah was out there plowing plow with 12 hill cops. Elijah won't find him wrestling with his man. Elijah went home, killed the ox, fed it to the family, and burned everything he had. He had nothing to go back to. Amen. Elijah said he took off and he ministered under Elijah. How do you minister to it? He said, I like what you do. Hey, I'll, don't you mess up. I burned everything I got to come follow you. Yeah. Hey, man, I'm hot on your trail. And you know what the, you know what the adversary did? He brought people up, boys, three different times. And, and they said, wait a minute, don't you know that the day your master's going to be taken from him? He said, nevertheless, he went on and followed him anyway. Yeah. Followed him anyway. Got down there to the brook. Guess what happened? Hey, listen, Elijah looked over the last year, right? and he said, what would you have that I do to you? And it'll do for you. And he said, I would with a double portion of my spirit. He didn't say, give me two of them mounts. He didn't say, I need 24 hours. I left 12. He didn't say, let me go back home for you, Mom and Dad, and one more meal. He said, I want a double portion of my spirit. Well, you know what he said? He said, if you see me go up. I've never thought about this before. Y'all have to forgive me. I, I'm noticing that the more I study, the more I realize it. I feel like I, I was telling somebody Monday morning. I said, I, this is the first time that I know of as a pastor. I stood up in the church and for 30 seconds I couldn't say a word. I said, but you know what? I've seen something in the Bible. Yeah. While the devil was standing up on him, up in, uh, as superintendent, I saw something I never saw before. I said, I preached from that scripture. I've had a good time in that book. But I never saw before that you and I may go through the fire. But thank God we have overcame the adversary. Who was that? Elijah and Elijah. You know why Elijah looked at Elijah and said, if you see me, you know what? Because 
because he can't see if he ain't there. Yes, sir. Huh? You know when you stay on a license, keep doing what you're doing. Amen. Don't turn back. Yeah. You've already done it three different times and you stay hollow on my trip. If you see me do it, that means he's going to have to be present. Yeah. Well, preacher, I should have lied. Another portion of the Lord. And we don't see him for a month. <laughs> you know what Elijah said? Get you. Amen. Boy, I sure would like. Hey, Brother Foy, I sure would like to be able to pray like Paul Bessie prayed. Amen. Well, you're going to have to go to your secret place. You're going to have to pray. Amen. Boy, I sure would like to be able to preach like my preacher. I bought a suit like him. I bought shoes like him. He bought a Bible. Just like him. I ain't going to fix it. Come on, brother. All right. He spent time with God. Amen. Yeah. Boy, I sure would like to be able to say my like church. You better pray for something else. <laughs> That's good. I sure would like to be able to play that piano like they play the piano. But we don't practice. We don't put forth no effort. It's not going to happen, friend. I, we ain't praying about it. We ain't asking God about it. And I'm going to say it He said, Elias, if you want it, you've got to be here to see it happen. Amen. Amen. And here's how real it was. Elisha didn't pick up that man and say, I have the spirit of life. He said, where is the Lord God of life? The Bible said them waters parted just like they had when Elijah smoked water. But the Bible said the men standing on the bank. And he said, the spirit of Elijah, the prince upon Elijah. Elijah didn't have to turn and say, I got it! I got it! And all the world said, he's got it. He's got it. Amen. Well, I just wonder what God will do if we quit talking about it. Let God be the one to show it. Hallelujah. Amen. I got to hurry. Serving God together. I just wonder if we're really Christians tonight. We really love the Lord. If we ain't happy with a man or a woman that loves God, and children that love God, and mom and dad love God, I wonder what if this passage through this world is really going to make us happy. We're going to serve God together. I can say this tonight because I am one. If we don't want a preacher to preach the word, what do we want? If I don't want people, if I don't want Sunday school teachers to stand up and teach in the church I'm passionate that love the Lord and love their body, what do I want? If I don't want people to give me filled with the Spirit when they're singing, what do I want? And we ought to want the truth of the Word of God, whatever it takes to skim in our life or cut off in our life or prune in our life to get that. That'll do what we want one for another. The ministry of in the church. Notice this. The mission of the church. I, I, I'll, I'll be real brief tonight. Matthew chapter number 28. Real quick tonight. Matthew chapter number 28 and verse number 19. Notice what your Bible says. Matthew 28 and verse number 19. The Bible says this. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. Teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you, brought with you all the way even to the end of the world. Amen. I want you to notice this Luke verse number 18 that Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Go ye therefore. And I just want you to know the one that has all power is the one that starts you and I to go. Amen. Amen. We don't, we don't need to plug into some other source tonight. It's him. Amen. We see the men in the church. We see the ministry in the church. But now we see the mission of the church. It is a grand and glorious feeling to be a part of a church that is in fellowship with the Lord Amen. of the church. Amen. Boy, ain't that good. Amen. Let me say something else. It ought to be a grand and glorious feeling to be a part of the local church tonight. Amen. I mean, a place that you can go. Assemble yourself together. Amen. And go to church. One of the others one this uh, uh, tonight. Miss Jimmy's coming to the piano. I'm gonna, I'm gonna stretch on this right here just a moment. Notice this the mission uh, of the church. The Bible said in verse number three, and when they had fasted and prayed and laid their hands on them, they sent them away. <clears throat> so they being sent forth by the Holy Ghost, departed unto Salaka. And from thence they sailed to Cyprus. You know what's happening here? They ain't just got one place on their back. They're going where it is that the Lord said go, but they also know that the journey ain't over. There's somewhere else we got to get to. What is that tonight? That is the mission of the church 
tonight. She's playing soft on the beat. I want to give you this. Stand on your feet all across that. I want to give you this, baby. Spreading the gospel is not part of what we ought to do. But spreading the gospel is what we ought to do. It's not part of it. It's not part of our ministry. Spreading the gospel is our ministry.
630. Long as weather's permit, we're going to be at 630 down at the third three. And uh, before our evening services, so those of us able to do that, I wanted to announce it to you again that you know that. Please be much in prayer for Miss Tiffany York tomorrow. And uh, if she's traveling in tonight and then tomorrow, or uh, we'll do a recess whenever she has to make this decision that God will just heal and uh, have his hand upon that. Amen. All right, go away and pray. Go back Sunday morning and pray. Yes, sir. For the youth, November the 6th is the next day to set the Bible to be in the book of Daniel chapter 1 through 6. All right, don't forget that. Be prepared for that. All right. Sunday morning break. We can get us here in the air. Good night. God bless you. Good night.